when visiting Montezuma Well, which is beautiful, by the way, if you've not been there and you happen to be driving by, I highly recommend you stop and check it out. But it's a very unique place, especially underwater, which obviously I didn't go there. I have an aversion for diving into leech-infested pools of arsenic. But I had wondered if somebody possessing the right brand of crazy had actually given that a try. And it turns out that there is a joint production between Curiosity Stream and the National Park Service documenting the experience of some fellows who actually did it. Since the video was public domain and it's very much relevant to my content, I decided to upload it to my channel. Roll that beautiful bean footage. When thinking of the national parks, our mind sends us on a journey to some of the most iconic vistas in America. But below the surface lies an unseen world. These are the cultural and scientific treasures that make up the underwater wonders of the national parks. The Verde Valley, Arizona. A few miles removed from the majestic cliff dwellings of Montezuma Castle lies Montezuma Well, a sacred site revered by Southwest Native American tribes that is also home to a mystery that baffles scientists and researchers to this day. In the middle of the desert, we have this very dramatic and unique landscape where there is a sinkhole here that has this tremendous uh, aquifer underneath it that flows up and, and is continuously flowing and it provides a, a really abundant life for all of these trees and it truly is a, an oasis in the middle of the desert here in Arizona. This unspoiled environment has taken ages to form. Ancient rainwater percolated through the nearby Mogollon Rim, causing a limestone cave to erode and collapse thousands of years ago. The result? Montezuma Well, a body of water 386 feet in diameter, whose continuously flowing underground vents provide fresh water year-round. Although the well provides a wealth of scientific information for biologists and ecologists, today, members of the National Park's Submerged Resources Center are here for an entirely different reason. While visitors observe the stillness of the well from a viewing platform high on the rim, below the water's surface, there lies one of the most baffling environments on Earth. Years ago, I heard about Montezuma's well, and it's quite honestly one of the most unique and bizarre diving environments I've ever been in. As you gear up, one of the more difficult things about diving here is just getting out to the middle of the well. There's this kind of 30-foot barrier of just immensely dense and very difficult to navigate weeds. All of the weeds get kind of, you know, caught around you and if you walk you basically sink into your waist of just muck. So you get stuck and your feet get stuck. So we tried putting on our fins and kind of, you know, pushing through and swimming as far as we could. Once you break free of all that weeds and you get in the middle, and you drop down to about, uh, about 45 feet deep. And as you come to the bottom, suddenly you, you realize that the, the bottom is swirling all around you. It kind of messes with your head. It gives you kind of vertigo because it's moving and it feels like you're moving. And what we found is the bottom has these pools of, of liquefied sand. It's this suspended particulate that just is exactly like water. As a diver, you're hovering over this and you're looking at it, and the, the, the bottom is kind of swirling around, and then the, the material gets pushed to the edge, and there's bobbing wood and, and debris fields that are kind of out there on the edge of these pools, and then there's these bubbling sand pits that kind of continuously bubble in, in sometimes a violent way, and there's billions and billions of amphipods that are just crackling all around and, and swimming all around. It's just a, it's a very bizarre and a, and a strange environment to be in. 
one that I've never seen like it and people that I've talked to who've spent many more years in the water in caves or in sinkholes have never heard anything uh, like this at all. These suspended particulates have created what is known as a false bottom. While it would appear that the divers have reached the lowermost portion of the well, in actuality, the force from the pressurized water vents feeding the well causes the liquefied sands to hover, making visual confirmation of the bottom impossible. You can put your hand down into the sand and it doesn't feel any different. It's not like being at the beach where you stick your hand in the sand and you feel resistance. The only indicator that you get is it's actually a slightly warmer. But other than that, it feels like your, your hand is just in water. It has been likened to a type of quicksand. So if you stay in one place for too long, all of the sand kind of comes up from underneath and it moves to the side of the pool and then it settles and it settles and compacts and compacts. Anything that's resting in the edges of this pool eventually becomes compacted into the sand and it's hard to get out. I mean, it's not like it's gonna swallow you like you know a B movie or something like that, but it, your, your fins get stuck or your camera gets stuck. And although the underwater environment may look like that of a distant planets, a variety of aquatic life flourishes at Montezuma Well. Despite the high levels of both carbon dioxide and arsenic found in the water, levels that make it impossible for fish to breathe and thrive, evolutionary adaptation has benefited the five distinct endemic species that are found here. The inhabitants, diatoms, a single-celled algae, amphipods, an abundance of small shrimp-like creatures, snails, non-blood-sucking leeches, and water scorpions. These last two sit at the top of a simple yet thriving food chain. Think about it. Everything that lives in the well doesn't really have anywhere to go. They're sort of trapped in there. <laughs> so over the eons, um, things that came here evolved to such a point that they, you can't find them anywhere else in the world. And they've made adaptations to the well itself. It's actually quite unique. The leeches are blind. They have hairs around their mouth that they uh, use to feel the vibrations in the water, and that's how they find their prey. They feed on the amphipods, and they move up and down the water column. Most of the species that live here are at the bottom of the well during the day, and they come up at night to feed. So the amphipods have to protect themselves. Towards the end of the day, they come up to feed on the algae, and the leeches know to come up to feed on them. So they're all hiding out at a different level to get away from something for a different reason. So you have this kind of bizarre soup of, of this hunter hunted kind of mentality and if you look closely these leeches will they'll stay on the bottom and they'll wait and they'll just try to snatch all these amphipods as they swim by. If there are other things living down there under the false bottom you can be sure that they're probably endemic species found nowhere else in the world and probably blind. Researchers have also been left in the dark when it comes to the mysteries found beyond the false bottom. While previous National Park underwater expeditions have succeeded at measuring scientific data below the liquefied sands, attempts to look beyond them and find their source have to this day been unsuccessful. With these kind of pools of liquefied sand, one of the things that we've, we've been interested to see is, is there any way to penetrate through those? Is there anything below? And one of the things we found is every time we try to lower something into the well, it gets pushed back up. We have in the past overweighted cameras or ROVs and lowered them down. And as they descended down through this liquefied sand pool, it was complete blackness, which would indicate to us that this kind of upwelling is completely filled with sediment all, all through the column. So it's not, like, it's not like the top layer is sand and there's this breakthrough of clear water underneath. Years ago when we were here and we were looking at the, the kind of makeup of the well, we, we had this reinforced to us. We had an environmental probe, a, a data logger, that, um, that we found a pool that was quite active. And we were, at, we were at 50 feet deep and we lowered that down with a string. And as the diver was lowering it, he finally hit bottom. And that was about 40 to 45 feet lower than we already were, thus making the well about 90 feet deep. 
But as he started to reel it back in, what he noticed it was getting harder and harder to reel because what was happening is the sand was coming up and then it was spilling over and then falling back down and compacting on top of the instrument. So the sand is in constant flux. And the interesting thing is there's this upwelling that obviously is keeping the sand suspended. But when you're above the pools, you don't feel water coming up. There's no rush of water. So it's not like there's a column of water that's coming up through the well. It's just a, it's a very bizarre and a very unique environment. For those not able to experience the unique environment below the water's surface, a look at the surrounding rim of the well provides a window to the past. Native Southwest tribes took advantage of the continuous water flow at Montezuma Well to establish both agriculture and their homes. The first evidence of people at the site dates 10 to 13,000 years ago. And while those groups did not settle here, by 600 AD, Montezuma Well housed a thriving community. The Hopis, uh, this is part of their ancestral home and there's quite a bit of agriculture around here. Might surprise you in the desert. The people built canals and ditches out and it irrigated about 60 acres. So water's coming in from the vents and water's going out through the outlet. It starts here and it goes through the rock about 150 feet and comes out the other side of this, this cliff here. And that journey of the water takes about seven minutes. And then as the well empties via the outlet, it gets refilled. So that equals a really nice, constant, stable environment of water coming and water leaving, and the um, actual level never really changes. So every day, 1.5 million gallons flows uh, out of the spring at the bottom of the well and into uh, an irrigation ditch, which uh, the ditch itself is about 1,000 years old. That canal they built by hand back then was um, about seven miles long. And that was a lot of work just the labor to keep that up. Even today, it's one of our, our struggles is to keep the water channeled into the duct. The architectural know-how of these southwestern tribes can also be seen in the majestic cliff dwellings of Montezuma Castle. But even here at the well, 22 rooms can be found surrounding the rim. a historical home to numerous tribes. It forms a sacred spiritual part of their mythology. Today, it's still used for ceremonial purposes. For example, naming a baby or a sort of a coming of age ceremonies. And the native tribes around here do those ceremonies and also collect some water that they you know, also believe is, is holy and sacred so the traditions go on. The last time we were here, we, we had some, uh, some tribal members come out and they blessed the well and they blessed our operations in that. And that is something you think about. I mean, you're in a diving environment. As you look around, there's, there's cliff dwellings and, and rock houses everywhere you look. And you, you can't help but think that what it would have been like in cultures past when, when this would have been filled with people and it would have been, you know, kind of a bustling community. Those things always kind of cross your mind as you're in these environments. I've had the privilege of diving in many different places around the world, quite frankly, and this is, is absolutely one of the most unique places that I've ever been underwater. 